Hey everybody, my name is Daryl O'Bear and I'd like to welcome you back to Maya Mondays. So today what we're going to be doing is talking about cameras. I covered off some of this uh, camera stuff in my first videos that I made that were from AU and I didn't have time to really go into everything I wanted to show. So today what we're going to do is just talk about some stuff related to cameras in Maya. So like the previous videos, this is going to be awesome if you're a new user or an intermediate user of Maya. Lots of good stuff in here. If you're an old expert, chances are you know most of this stuff. Maybe you'll pick something up. Hopefully you do. I'm not, I'm not sure. So what we're going to do is um, just kind of do a couple different camera moves here inside of Maya. And I'm going to use my bracket keys to sort of navigate through those camera moves. And you can see as I do that, we get these animated transitions. And I'm not a fan of the animated transitions um, for two reasons. Number one, they got some Z issues. You can see that kind of Z buffering, all that weird kind of coplanar polygon popping looking stuff happening. And the other problem I have with them is they just slow me down, right? Like I'm waiting a half a second to get anywhere that I want to go to. So what I do is I, I turn that stuff off. Go to your system preferences, jump up to uh, cameras, and just turn off all those animated transitions. And now, if we use the bracket keys to jump back and forth between our last and previous view, you can see how snappy it feels. It's just instant, so it's much better. Another thing that's worth mentioning is there's more than one way to kind of jump through your different camera views. I was using the bracket keys to go previous and last camera view, but I can also use another hotkey, just Alt-Z. Um, so Alt-Z allows me to basically just jump through these different hotkey, uh, my, my, my last camera moves. Alt-Y actually will go forward in the camera moves, but I use the Alt-Z a good bit because, you know, like I'll move a camera, and I don't really love it. Alt-Z two times, I'm back to where I was. The other thing that's worth mentioning is that if you select the camera, and you can do that two ways inside of Maya, just by going View Select Camera, or um, another way of doing it is just clicking Select Camera up here on this little icon. So bringing that guy up and bringing up the attributes for this guy, you'll notice that the underneath uh, on, the, on the shape node for that camera, there's an actual section called Movement Options, and you can turn on Undoable Movement Options. So once, once you have that turned on, all my camera moves are now in my undo queue, meaning if I start to hit my Z key, I'm actually undoing those camera moves because they're recorded as um, undo, they're in the undo queue of Maya. I never have it turned on, I just wanted to mention that it was there, it might be useful for, for some of you guys. So the other thing that's worth talking about since we have the um, perspective shape node up is the 2D pan and zoom. So there's a couple different ways of enabling um, the ability to pan around a camera in 2D and zoom into a camera in 2D, so you're not really changing the position of the camera when you turn 2D pan and zoom on. You're just kind of putting another transform on top of it, specifically to allow you to maybe get in close if you're trying to trace a character's line with a grease pencil, or if you wanted to see what was going on on a certain spot, but you didn't want to mess up your camera framing, you can turn on 2D pan and zoom. And like I said, there's two ways of doing it. One way is obviously just turn it on inside of the inside of the, the node of the camera, and you can see down here below my character, it now gives me the um, heads-up display that 2D pan and zoom is now what we're viewing through this viewer. The other way of turning it on is by hitting the 2D pan zoom um, icon up here. And again, it gives me the heads-up display saying, you know, this viewer now is the 2D panned version of the perspective camera, or the 2D zoomed version of the perspective camera. So once you've done that and you've turned it on, you know, um, you can start making tweaks either to the numbers in the actual attribute editor, or you can go into the 2D pan zoom tool. So if you go into, um, let's see here, camera tools, 2D pan zoom tool, as soon as I turn the tool on, you can see it's now registering over here as the active tool. If you double click on the tool, you can basically change whether it's in a pan mode, and you can see those numbers changing over here, or a zoom mode. So if you go into zoom mode, now I can zoom in. Maybe I just wanted to look at this character's you know, tooth or something. Now, obviously, if I turn off the, the view of the 2D pan zoom, we're going to go back to our standard perspective. So it's just a it's just a modification of the view of that camera, or an offset sort of of the zoom in the pan of that camera that you can enable on and off. So that's pretty straightforward. So the next thing that's, uh, that's worth talking about inside of uh, cameras in Maya is it's a really good idea when you're working with Maya not to render your perspective camera. Let the perspective camera be sort of one of your working views, but for your shot camera or your render camera, I always go ahead and create a new camera, an actual true camera inside of Maya. So if we say, um, we'll just use the drop down here, if we say create cameras, you can see that we have lots of different options for this. So um, we can create a standard camera, which is a single node camera, very similar to the perspective camera, 
a camera with an aim, so that gives us basically the body of the camera and an aim. It's a two-node camera for all practical purposes. Um, the next one is camera aim and up. So this gives us a third node that allows us to adjust the twist of the camera. And then there's a stereo camera and the multi-stereo rig. I'm not going to talk about those guys. Steven Rosell a couple years ago did an amazing post on the stereo camera and the, the stereo uh, multi-stereo rig. Go to his blog, look at it. I'm not going to do a blog on it because he did a really bang up job on that. But I will talk about um, the way I like to set my cameras up. And I pretty much, I like the flexibility of the three node camera, but I don't love the actual grouping that we have default inside of Maya. So I change it up a little bit and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So we'll go ahead and we'll create this new camera. And you can see what we've got here is we've got this, this new, uh, it's a tiny little camera because my scene's so big here. We've got this new camera sort of hanging out. And if you look at the hierarchy for this guy, we've got the camera body, we've got the the aim, um, which is the uh, allows me to adjust that twist of that camera with a node, and then we've got the the camera aim, which is sort of you know the uh, the look at point of that camera. So what I like to do with this guy is I like to take the camera body and the camera up, and I like to group those guys together, right? So I, I take that guy and I take that guy, and I group those guys together. So now what I've got is I've got essentially kind of a two-node camera where I've got the aim, which allows me to adjust where that camera is looking, and then I've got the back of the camera that allows me to adjust sort of the body of the camera with it also adjusting the overall twist of that camera. So that's really how I like to set that guy up. So let's go ahead and just um, frame this guy out. And when I'm setting up cameras, you know, sometimes I'll go ahead and I'll create a two panel view that allows me to really look at this camera and and see what see what that camera is actually doing and I can use my perspective view to actually position that guy so we'll just bring up the outliner again really quickly to grab the back of this camera and we're going to set a couple keyframes on this guy so we'll grab that back of that camera you know we'll rise that guy up we'll pull this dude back here and sort of position this at this guy's face so here's something that's actually really uh really pretty cool I always go in here on my shot cameras and I turn on through the camera drop down my render resolution. So my um my resolution gate. I turn that guy on. So what that does is that essentially goes through and it turns a few different things on using the menu drop down. If we look at this camera and we go into it Where are you here? Actually, let's bring up the outliner for that guy. Say so select that camera. So if we look at the shape node on this camera, what we've actually done is we've gone through, when we, when we use that menu dropdown, we've turned on the display resolution and we've turned on the gate mask. So what the gate mask does is it, it grays the area out that's not inside of your, inside of your um, you know, what's going to get actually rendered. And you can adjust the opacity to that to, from 0 to 1 or, or just use a toggle switch to turn that guy on or off. So what I like to do is I like to, um, it also all turns on this overscan at a value of 1.3. So if we put this to a value of 2, you can see that we're really getting a, a good sense of, of what's going on with that camera. Now what I'll do is I normally leave this at a value of 1.3 and you can see that it's not, you know, with this window changes its size, the way that it fits in there works a little bit different. When it starts to get really narrow, it doesn't have the ability to overscan that properly. So what I'll do is I'll go through here and I'll change this overscanning from being um, a fill mode, if you look here and you'll see the camera settings on this, from being fill, I'll switch this to horizontal. And as soon as I do that, now as this changes size here, you can see that framing always has a little bit of um, padding on the side of it at a value of 1.3. So then I'll go back into that camera and I'll just drop that resolution down you know, maybe to one two or one one on that overscan, but now no matter what I do, as I as I change the size of that camera, I always get a little bit of you know what's outside of my frame. It never really clamps itself off. So just a couple of little tips on that. Nothing nothing too fancy there. So let's bring up the outliner one more time. We'll we'll grab that new group that I made on our camera here, and what we're going to do is we're just going to set a couple keyframes on that guy. So let's go ahead and we'll grab uh, we'll grab that and. We're going to snap that pivot point, get that guy sort of snapped back there. So I just held down my D key, which is the set pivot, to set that pivot for that, that group because it looks like I introduced a little offset into it. Um, the D key 
is a is a cool key. As you hold it down, it allows you to set the pivot. As soon as you let it go, the set pivot goes away. I think I might have covered that off in a hotkey video before. I'm not sure if I did or not. But what we're going to do with this guy is we're going to we're just going to set some keyframes on this. Now notice what's happening as I scrub through my time slider here. My active viewport updates as I scrub through my time slider, and the other camera here isn't updating as I scrub that time slider because by default Maya is only going to try to update whatever your active pane is and that's something that when I'm working with you know setting up my shots I don't always love there's an option to change that so if we bring up the options and go to time slider um, which it looks like I'm already on which is great we switch this update view from active to all so as soon as we put that to all, now as I scrub my time slider, you can see that both viewports, oops, did I not get it? Let's see here. I must not have turned that on. Active to all. There we go. I hit cancel instead of save. That's silly of me. Um, you can see now that they're both updating, right? Pretty straightforward. So now I can have my, you know, my panel that I'm going to use to, to frame my shot, as well as my other panel that I'm going to use to uh, to sort of We'll kind of push in on this guy a little bit. We'll grab that camera aim and, you know, just kind of push that guy over. That looks cool. All right. So what we're going to do is we're just going to set some keyframes. So we'll just hit Shift W as my dude sort of walks up to the camera here. We'll pull this guy back. So we're just going to do a pullback as, as he's walking toward us. He's going to kind of swing around here. Cool. So now what we've got is we've got this little, you know, this little camera move happening on my dude as he sort of walks up. And if I wanted to start making tweaks or changes to this camera move, you know, you jump into your perspective view or you pull up your graph window. So we'll just grab that guy. Graph editor. That's going to be an animation editor. So you get this graph editor, right? And if you want to start using this graph editor to start making changes to that camera, you know, you're grabbing X, Y, and Z. You're using these guys to, to adjust the position of this camera using three, you know, three, three function curves. It's just really hard to, 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 to position a camera using three function curves. So what I like to do is I like to just turn that node or that, that, those keyframes into an editable motion path. And we added these editable motion trails, um, editable motion paths into Maya a few releases ago and man they're awesome let's undo that a few times here and then redo that it looks like I offset a keyframe there so we don't want to we don't want to have that like that so now what I've got is if we bring up that graph window one more time now what we've got is we've got you know the ability to adjust the overall position of those function curves directly in our viewport and this is a whole lot easier right if I want to massage or, or sculpt or shape the effect of this of this function curve having these editable motion trails just gives me an awesome awesome way to do that directly in the viewport and obviously if we want to adjust the timing of this we can display the timing beads and we can adjust the in and out tangent of this if we wanted to you know you know add a little a little hop to this guy where it rises up a little bit, so so much easier to to edit the the, uh, the function curves using these editable motion trails as opposed to trying to use the graph editor. So they're awesome for getting really nice, smooth, archy camera moves. Great for doing edit, uh, motion paths on airplanes and you know characters and cars and editable motion paths. Even though we're talking about cameras, um, I don't know. I just think they're cool. So. That's pretty much it for uh, for Maya Mondays this week. We talked about cameras. Hopefully, it made some sense to you guys. I, I hope there is some value in there for the for the more expert users. For the new guys, I'm sure there's some some good some good stuff in here. Thanks again for taking time to uh, to watch it. Take it easy.